Watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Maui, Hawaii, a tropical paradise where sun, sand, and sea come together to form the perfect escape from the winter doldrums. Now celebrating its 30th year, we welcome you to day three of the EA Sports Maui Invitational from Lahaina. It's Arkansas taking on Gonzaga. Hi everybody, John Chami alongside Jimmy Dykes. Our championship game is coming up tonight at 10 Eastern on ESPN. But first, a matchup of two teams. They lost their opening round matchups in game two. They both bounced back and looked pretty sharp. Well, you think of Arkansas right now. Mike Anderson loves his guys. The reason why, they're a bunch of blue-collar dudes, long, quick athletes that get after you on the defensive end of the floor and can really pressure you. They sped up a fast Minnesota team, and Minnesota never could handle it. Will they do that to Gonzaga? I don't know. Gonzaga is loaded at the guard position. Kevin Pango's terrific shooting at basketball right now. Gonzaga may be the best offensive team we have in college ball. Great offense versus great defense, Gonzaga and Arkansas. Interesting matchup. The fastest 40 minutes against the Zags. Hogs and Zags, and it comes your way next. Well, here the EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Number 11, Gonzaga, taking on Arkansas from the Lahaina Civic Center. And the Zags fans here, the Hogs fans as well. And Jimmy Dykes, time now to check out our one-on-one. -on -one. one of the things that'll be fun to watch, contrasting styles in this game. Absolutely, defense versus offense. And Arkansas, when they came to the island, they unpacked their defense is this is a hard-hitting ball club that they try to make you uncomfortable for 40 minutes. They force turnovers right now at about a 25% rate on their opponents. This is a team that likes to gather loose balls, rip and run to the other end. They have to play aggressive and a dirty style of ball. That's what makes Arkansas at their best. They cannot be a finesse team against who I think is an outstanding finesse team on the offensive end. I think this is the best offensive team we have in college ball right now. The numbers back it up. You compare them to BYU and Oklahoma State and Duke, Wisconsin. They cannot match the numbers of Gonzaga. Arkansas make you uncomfortable for 40 minutes. They rely on runs. Arkansas needs to get three or four 8-0 type runs in this building to hang with the Zags. Gonzaga, they are lights out offensively at every area of the game. For the season, almost 93 points a game, shooting 57%. There's not one area of Gonzaga's offense that doesn't concern you. Our one-on-one -on -one brought to you by EA Sports FIFA 14. The Zags line up. Three-guard attack. David Stockton, Kevin Pangos, Gary Bell Jr. And up front it's Sam Dower Jr. and Shemek Karnowski. For Arkansas, Michael Qualls, Fred Gully the third, Antlon Bell, and then up front Alandis Harris. And the freshman Bobby Portis, who played very well yesterday in the win over Minnesota. Mike Anderson, fastest 40 minutes in basketball. Third season as Arkansas head coach after coming over from Missouri. And then there's Mark Few, 15th year. He's won at least 23 games every year. Been to the NCAA tournament every year. Remarkable stuff what he's been able to accomplish as the head coach in Spokane. In Arkansas's quarterfinal loss to Cal. They got pumped on the boards. They got a hammer. Yesterday they responded really well. They must be just as aggressive on the boards today against a big Gonzaga front line. They get it to Karnowski. He's certainly got a size advantage on Portis. Takes advantage. I'm telling you, from every spot now, it doesn't matter if it's post up or cuts or pick and roll, spot ups and transition, this team can score in one. And Portis rolls it home. Arkansas immediately jumps in to their full court pressure. The Jimmy Gonzaga would seem to be a tough team to press and pressure. They basically have three point guards on the floor. It will be difficult, but it will not phase what Arkansas wants to do in this game. Mike Anderson will go nine or ten deep to try to get into the legs of Gonzaga. Dower flips it up. That'll roll in. Uh, he shoots a really soft, nice basketball. Even his misses look good. They hang on that rim and allow offensive rebounds if they don't drop. Antoine Bell contested by Stockton. Out of bounds, and it belongs to Gonzaga. Shemek Karnowski, the native of Poland, seven feet tall. He goes about 300 pounds. 
And a guy who is skilled. Flip it up with both the right and the left hand. If you're not skilled, you don't get recruited by Mark Few. That's a great point. It sounds simple, but that is really one of the hallmarks of this team offensively. A very skilled team. Out of bounds, a turnover. First on the Zags, and it belongs to Arkansas. Arkansas is going to try to climb right up into your jersey, and if you don't own your spot and sweep that ball hard and own your spot, Arkansas will own you. Zag in zone. Arkansas handled it pretty well so far in this tournament by getting that ball to that high post area and making plays off of it. Bell is their designated shooter along with 24 claws. And a travel on Antoine Bell, it's a turnover. That is not what Antoine Bell does best. He's a catch and shoot guy, especially off screening action. You make Antoine Bell do something off the bounce, you've done your job defensively. now Bell using the screen shot rejected by Landis Harris for the recovery speed by Arkansas defensively terrific Bordis with a rebound amidst the traffic Gully Single. and Bordis and then a foul underneath, they get that on Gary Bell Jr. Bobby Portis, yesterday evening, when I was walking back through the hotel, he showed me I will not get punked again in my career on the boards. And what does Bobby Portis do? He goes right up in traffic in the middle of two giants and comes down with the basketball. Okay, 12 points and seven boards in the win over Minnesota. I missed everything there. Mango spot stocked in high off the window and good. Well, not known as a scorer, but he's known as a high IQ smart dude. His dad, the best point guard to ever play the position in basketball. Bell tried from D. Jimmy, he can. He can hit it from pretty much anywhere on the court. And, and Gonzaga has to know that. You're going to play zone. That's the one guy that you have to shade a step, maybe a step and a half closer than you normally do in your zone. Dower uses the ball fake on Gully. Stripped out of bounds. It stays with the Zags. 16 of the shot clock. The hot hands of Arkansas. Came in on Dower. He had a mismatch. He did a good job with the read and the lift and the drive. He can put the ball on the floor. But you have to be aware of the hot hand action of the Hogs. When they get an offensive foul, that'll go on Sam Dower, his first. Sam Dower just helps Fred Gully out of the way. It's an easy call. Dower takes a seat, and Kardowski will come out for Dran Guinness back in. Zag is still in that zone. Gully spinning. Ordis looking for some help. Rick Gully played pretty well in the Minnesota game. The limited minutes. And they're opening loss to Cal. The box out underneath by Drank Guinness. It ends up at Stockton. Now Bell. He's their best shooter. Yeah, he is. As they move that ball from side to side. They get open looks. You talk about a drive or a punch of the defense with a purpose. Gonzaga just threw one at Arkansas. Gary Bell Jr. at about 43% in his career from three. For the junior, Anton Bell answers with a triple in his own. Anytime he can rise and fire without putting that ball on the floor, Gonzaga is in hope mode when the ball is in the air. He shoots it too good. Kardowski with Portis on him. And 
and here's Pangos, rejected by Harris. Gonzaga by a point, one of the toughest players in the tournament to guard. That would be Kevin Pangos. He sees the floor, delivers, shoots, will break down why he's so tough to stop when we come back. Gonzaga by a point. Kevin Pangos has started every game but one since arriving on campus in Spokane. Jimmy Jikes, he's able to do a little bit of everything. What is it that makes him so hard to guard? Well, he's hard to guard because he touches all areas of the floor. He is lights out as a shooter, supreme shooter's confidence. He deserves to make every shot because of the hours he spent in the gym. He is a playmaker. He understands how to get his body into defenders, draw people to him, delivers passes on time and on target. He's a coach on the floor. Yesterday closed out the half. What was he looking at? The game clock. The game pressure never gets to this kid. The clock pressure never gets to this guy. He's a coach on the floor, a game manager. You break down Kevin Pengos right now. He has an adjusted field goal percentage of 61%. 80% of his offense is out of the half court, 78 plays in the half court, 88 points. He's scoring 1.12 points per play. That's top 12% in the country. There is no weakness in this kid's game. Kevin Pangos, a native of Canada, is the ball inbound to Shemek Karnowski, and the Zags lead this one by a point. Gary Bell Jr. And flying in, Drank Guinness. Wasn't able to come up with it. Bell tracks it down. Great hustle by Gary Bell Jr. Stockton uses the ball fake. Tried to get it to Karnowski. And now the loose ball eventually ends up with the Hogs. Third turnover on Gonzaga. Harris can't hit, Drake Guinness the board. Man, Arkansas is settling a little bit for jumpers right now. They were so good for the two-point part of the floor against the zone yesterday. That one tapped away, fourth turnover. Anton Bell can't hit, Karnowski the board. So each side will hold at the moment. Gonzaga wants Anton Bell shooting shots off the bounce. He has to know that himself. Stockton with the bigger player, Harris on it. Van Guinness trying to find Karnowski, and now it's Pangos. Mm. They are so skilled from the left-handed pass right on target to the shooter out top. Four-point advantage for Gonzaga as a team this year coming into this game. Gonzaga shooting 57%. Gary Bell Jr., he's the best of them. He missed everything. A wide-open look. Balls. And they get stocked in on the foul. Gonzaga is not a crazy athletic team, but they are a crazy skill team. Look at the pass by Dran Guinness, a left-handed wraparound behind the back of a defender, and the ball ends up right on the numbers. Watch this. Wham! Boom! Into the shot pocket, up and in. You cannot do it any better than that at the college level. The things that they work on, the finer points of the offensive game, all the type of skill sets you have to have as a passer, Gonzaga is so good in those areas. Cody Clark into the game here, and now Rashad Madden picks out. Bell will try. And the smallest guy of the court, Stockton, comes down with. Jordan Coleman into the game for the Zags. We we'll talked about him, a transfer for Providence, gives them a much different look. And Juan Karnowski fouled by Moses Kingsley. Moses Kingsley is not going to block the shot at Karnowski. Not very often. The reason why, yes, he can jump higher, but he doesn't have the width and the strength. Watch right here. Boom. The shoulder of Karnowski, the right shoulder of Karnowski, gets into Moses Kingsley and eliminates his shot blocking ability right there. That separation and that strength of the shoulders gets Karnowski not only the basket, but to the strike. Now Kingsley's giving up about 70 pounds, so if you try and foul Shemek Karnowski, you better foul him. 
What I love about this game right now, both teams are playing extremely hard. And I've heard guys say playing hard is a talent or a skill. I couldn't disagree more. Playing hard is what you're supposed to do. It's plain and simple. And these teams are doing it. Falls down. Now Michael Qualls buries that one, his first three points of the game. Arkansas doing a good job of recovering defensively. Here Karnowski exposes his numbers to the passer out front, you throwing the basketball. Greg Guinness off the mark. Arkansas can tie it with a three. Qualls against Karnowski had it rejected. And Michael Qualls can only shake his head. You're talking about the most explosive athlete in Maui. Just got stopped by a big Karnowski mountain. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau and visitmaui.com and Guitar Center. Give the greatest feeling this holiday season. Back in Maui, Gonzaga out to a 14-11 start. The guard play of the Zags is as good as you'll find in the college game, but this big guy, Shimmick Karnowski, has a lot to do with his three-point lead. He's been a beast on the low block. Catch the ball, make your move quickly, and get it up on the rim, and this guy understands it. Arkansas doesn't have the, the strength to handle this guy early in the game. And defensively, Michael Qualls is a good of athlete, not only on the island, but there is in the college game. And all he can do is shake his head. After running into Karnowski. Shevik Karnowski came from Poland. They discovered him when he was playing in the under 17 World Championships. They were actually looking at Kevin Pangos and they said, well, who's the big guy? Tommy Lloyd and company got him to come to Spokane. Nice rebound by Kingsley, who's fouled underneath. Let's see if they got Dower. If they did, it's his second. And they did, it's his second. That, that's more than just an offensive rebound and a foul and get yourself to the free throw strike. That's a little bit of a message to Gonzaga from Arkansas. Trying to set how the rules of this game are going to be played. Yeah, you may have some size on us inside, but we're not going to back away. We're going to throw punch for punch with you for 40 minutes. Kardowski back in. fouled underneath Cody Clark charged with that foul and Cody Clark just gets Karnowski wrapped up yeah, it's basically arm at arm right there look at Clark with another as Pangos went tumbling down. So Cody Clark picks up two fouls in about four seconds. Arkansas was so good yesterday defensively at playing defense with their feet, harassing defense with their feet and not fouling. Already five team fouls on Arkansas to start this one. Pico Haidar on Pangos at the moment. Zags by two. The Zags and the Hogs still to come our championship game, Syracuse Going up against Baylor. Cody Clark with a takeaway. And then as it's stripped back, loose ball. And who's got it? Pretty good fight for that one over on the sideline. And it belongs to Arkansas. And both these teams scrapping along. Kiko Haidar into the game. Their captain, as Madden, commits the turnover with the travel. Pye Madden had nowhere to go with the basketball. He's a tall guard that he needs a little extra space because he doesn't have jets. And there's no extra space right there. A good step up defense by Drew Barr. Yeah, he chose to reject the screen, might not have been the best choice in hindsight. 
Drake Guinness here with the basketball. Mangos at the rim, little too strong, and inside there's a foul. That one on Moses Kingsley. Old Spice Classic gets started tomorrow on Thanksgiving at noon Eastern on ESPN2 as Oklahoma State takes on Purdue. That's the first of four included in that. Memphis will play Siena and LSU at St. Joe's. The Old Spice Classic at HP Fieldhouse in Orlando. And it starts tomorrow. And Kevin Pangos with 27 points in their opening round loss to Dayton. Bobby Portis will check back in. He is now Pango's 30 out of 32 from the free throw stripe on the year. He has a, a very simple routine. I like guys that get the ball, routine the ball, and shoot the ball. You don't want your mind to get cluttered in the free throw stripe, and that's a simple routine every time, and it goes in about every time. He's got five points here in the early going. Isaiah can really shrink that zone defense. Hydar, the only real shooter on the floor, and he's only 5'10. He has to get wide open looks. Madden will try one. And underneath the fight for the rebound, and I believe it's Gary Bell Jr. being charged with that foul. And that's number two on the junior from Kent Washington. Arkansas can frustrate you trying to check them off the offensive glass because they are active, long, quick athletes. And you must hit first. You must go find your body and hit them first and jack them first. Or they will get around you and be above you in the blink of an eye. With this group on the court, where do they want to see the basketball go? Williams. How about that'll work? How about the Williams from 17 feet? Yeah, good enough. <laughs> and that really, that's his best shot. Pangos beats the pressure. Watch how many times those Zag kids pass with the opposite or the weak hand. They don't have one as passes. They get the foul of Kiko Haidar. And it is Haidar's first team foul number five. Kiko Haidar, a native of Fayetteville, on academic scholarship. A $50,000 Bodenhammer fellowship scholarship one of three student athletes in the history of the arkansas program to receive that award he had all the ivy league schools after him his mom and dad are professors there and he chose to stay at home in fayetteville and he played in high school with fred gully his teammate now coleman off the glass he wouldn't go and they get karnowski over the back that's his first and team foul number six so this team picking up fouls here in the early going. Mark Hughes group leading it by a bucket. Mark Hughes, what a year, huh? Last year, took Gonzaga not only to a number one seed, the overall number one seed, but they lost two pros in Olenek and Elias Harris. And Mike Hart, a G whiz defender. Active hands by the Razorbacks on the defensive end. The shot bad steps in and fouls Karnowski. That's his first. And team foul number six on the Hawks. Zagat got the mismatch off the pick and roll action. Pangos recognize it and a quick reversal back. Here's the pick and roll up top. Now when Karnowski rolls, he's into a mismatch. Gonzaga knows it. A quick reversal pass and a quick dump down because of it. Here at the Lahana Civic Center, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. John Chambi, Jimmy Dykes. 30th year of this magnificent tournament. From the corner, Barham. Rebounded by Williams. Harris spinning at the rim, looking for some space. Madden short, Karnowski the board. Kardowski backing down, gets it in deep, got it rejected. Oh, 
Oh, look at that from Stockton spinning it home. Oh, the blow by again, another mismatch. And every opportunity for Gonzaga, if they have a mismatch, they're going to attack. At that time, it was Stockton. Williams, and his three is no good. Good rebound by Madden, who gets hammered. Karnowski should never, never be the first guy off the floor around the rim. He's too big as a defender. Look at the smart play by Stockton to attack the left side of the rim and then get to the right side. It's the blow by and right underneath the shot blocking ability of Bobby Portis. Arkansas just five for 20 from the floor. The last foul on Karnowski is second as Hydar takes a seat and Bell checks back in. Their sharpshooter, Antoine Bell, back into the game. On these two teams setting courtside, well, they are really going at it now. The winner will, the, will leave with two wins. And lazy, selfish, not coachable. That's easy. It's easy to be those three things. It's tough to play hard every possession like these two teams are doing. Pretty good look by the big guy. When you say Gonzaga has a pretty good look, the ball is going in the net. They shoot it way too well to give them pretty good looks. Six-point advantage for the Bulldogs. Karnowski with the put back. His seventh rebound. And he's got six points to go along with it. Gonzaga leading it by eight. Again, Shimmy Karnowski throw up a mountain. Mike Anderson thought there was contact and the call didn't go their way. Boom. He actually broke the plane of verticality. That should have been a very important foul on Karnowski that doesn't get called. But he runs right down the middle of the floor. Pauses just for a second. Gonzaga makes a read off of him. He is there to clean up the miss. But he broke the plane of verticality against Landis Harris and the call didn't go Arkansas's way. Roy Hibbert talked about it two days ago for the Indiana Pacers. The best, the best in basketball at making that play without breaking the plane of verticality. Roy Hibbert's turned into a really good NBA player. Absolutely he has. Williams flying in, put back, wouldn't go. Luke Meekle has checked in for Gonzaga. From the corner, Dranginis shot, wouldn't fall. Fight for the loose ball. And they're going to get the foul on ball. All right, we'll check out another of our magic moments from Maui. Could it be a zag? Yeah, maybe. Morrison can hit that shot right in your grill. Uh, he just amazing body search and the ability to knock it down as well. That's in a single game, Maui tournament record. Nobody has scored as many points as Adam Morrison in this tournament. And yeah, you can log on to ESPN.com, search Maui moments for your favorite of the last 30 years of the EA Sports Maui Invitational. And right now, Adam Morrison netting those 43 against Michigan State in 05. That is the leader. Sean McDonough's favorite, the buzzer beater by Rodney Clark last year is in <laughs> second place. But, yeah, most outstanding player in 2005, Adam Morrison. Now he's student assistant on Mark Few's staff. Mark Few, how much has he poured himself into that Gonzaga program? Nine years as an assistant coach before he took over. Now 15 years as a head coach, 15 straight NCAA tournaments. One of the sharper minds in college basketball. He, he, he may look like a choir boy, but that is a competitive dude. Yeah. I certainly get a feel for it being around it. He's got a great sense of humor, but there's an intensity there. There's no mistake. Arkansas with zero points in the paint so far in this game. It's not that they're not trying. 
But the defense of Karnowski protecting that rim has been more than Arkansas can shake right now. Hang goes from deep. Mm. That is the gamble you run when you press Gonzaga. Losing a shooter on the back end of the press. And that's one of the better shooters in all of college ball that they just lost. Biggest lead of the game for Gonzaga up by nine. Bell trying to answer. Qualls. Michael Qualls, their leading scorer with the rebound. And Qualls another rebound. Springing into action over Meikle couldn't hit. Stockton, the son of former Gonzaga great John Stockton, NBA Hall of Famer. Arkansas switching out on Pangos on every down screen, head under screen situation. Balls on Pangos. This should be interesting. Shot clock winding down. Miko puts it up and in. The playmaking ability of Kevin Pangos so much more than a spot up shoot. Williams rejected by Miko. And the Zags fans here at Lahaina loving it. You can't let Pangos use the screen and he rejects it and still gets to the front of the rim. And one. That's what makes him so tough right there. You, he has a counter for what you do to him defensively. The best ones have it. They're going to get to their spot regardless of what you do to them. Kevin Pangos trails the play. And this is what I'm talking about. It's a gamble to press a team that can shoot it this well. You lose shooters at the back end of the press. The very next possession, he throws a full speed pass right at the numbers. And then the third possession, Kevin Pangos rejects the screen. Arkansas forced him to his weak hand. He has no weak hand. to a hot start here in this one but misses the free throw his third free throw miss of the season Pangos is similar to Julius Randle in Kentucky the great ones get to their spot no matter what you do to them defensively they always have and they always will Harris inside and one of Landis Harris showing off that strength right there I, I love this kid's game. He is strong and tough. Watch what Landis Harris does. He has an awkward, fallible game. He shoots shots off balance. His feet aren't lined up right. But all he does is get to the free throw stripe. Out of his 60 offensive plays for this guy, he gets to the free throw stripe about 26% of those plays. He's strong and tough. He has an awkward game. And he is, uh, has the ability to get fouled. When you're getting to the free throw strike, 26 per time, 26 percent of your times in the half court of your touches, you are a fallible guy, and that's what he is. They got that last foul on Luke Meikle, his first. Angles finds Meikle, who flips it up and in his offense against pressure. You don't fight pressure with pressure. You back cut pressure. You backdoor pressure. Gonzaga's done it well so far. Walls spines Harris, who goes baseline and puts it in. He has a little Draymond Greenish stuff about him. His body and kind of how he carries himself, his charismatic personality. Sure. He makes plays that you think you don't think his body is capable of making. Pops out on Drain Guinness here. Ten of the shot clock falls on Pangos. Pangos at the rim, left yeah. hand and good. That is unguardable, is what that is, because Michael Qualls is as good an athlete that Arkansas has to put on it. And he just got a little bit lower than Qualls and finished. Qualls soft touch from three. And Mark Few calls timeout. Nine-point game here at the Lahaina Civic Center. Kevin Payne goes when you break, and he's very good at scoring out of that pick and roll situation. Here he is, the pick and roll came, now he's the handler. He drives right and then goes to the left on purpose knowing that Qualls is gonna come at his right paw. 
as a pick and roll handler, Kevin Pangos, that's 20% of 20% of his half court production. He's scoring at 1.16 points per play as the pick and roll handler. That's an outstanding number, Boog. But again, you mentioned using that left hand at a spot where it seemed as though Qualls was sitting on the right hand to try and get the rejection. Zags hot right now. They've hit eight of their last ten. And the junior from Canada leading the way, Kevin Pangos. Michael Qualls, meanwhile, just knocking down a three. Kevin Pangos, when he was growing up, his dad used to force him left and force him to use his left going to his right, knowing that the day would come when a 6'2 guard was going to need that type of shot. Pangos' dad knew exactly what he taught his son. John Stockton, dad, or, uh, John Stockton as a dad knew what to teach his son as well. David up top. Stockton couldn't spin it in. And eventually Hydar saves, finds Bell. Bell to Qualls. Nico got a piece of it. And underneath, they get a foul. And I believe that's going to be on Bobby Portis. Kevin Pangos doing it all in the early going, Jimmy Dykes. Getting right at the rim, getting past Qualls, using the left hand. Tags by nine. Chris Cotter in studio coming up in the Land Rover Halftime Report. We'll take a peek at Kentucky Eastern Michigan here. Willie Cauley-Stein finds Julius Randle. What, zero points in the first half, seven in the second. Kentucky's starting to pull away a little bit here. We'll show you highlights, and we'll look ahead with Coach Greenberg and Jay Williams to the championship game out in Maui between Baylor and Syracuse. John? All right, Chris, thanks. Yeah, those two teams, number eight, number 18, 10 Eastern. On ESPN, Sean McDonough and Jay Phyllis on the call. For that one, still to come, Cal and Dayton will go head to head. As impressive as anyone in the Mountain Invitational so far has been the freshman point guard for Syracuse, Tyler Ennis. He had uh, no turnovers and made all his free throws in the quarterfinal win, and then the semifinals exploded as a score. Not one play from Tyler Ennis in Maui has he had his head down. His eyes, his head has always been up, even after a bad play. No bad body lengths, but he plays the game with his eyes up. Very much like Pangos and Stockton from Gonzaga. Bad body language is it's another thing it's easy to do. It's easy to have bad body language. Be tough, do what's right, shake it off, move on. Harris had it stripped away by Drake Guinness. Pangos at the rim and one, Kevin Pangos. He is just really difficult to stop. He is a hard-nosed, tough-as-nails competitor on top of everything else. And he will go into the gym for a couple of hours at a time and work only on his going to his left pull-up 14-foot shot. And he'll come back the next day and work for a couple of hours on his drive to the rim to his right and finish with his left a guy with a plan that is producing in college ball got 15 points to lead all scores calls now he's trying to find cody clark it's out of bounds and touch last by gonzaga this is as good a defense that gonzaga has played all season long i have not been in love with the defensive effort or the defensive attention to detail so far in this game they have been just as aggressive as an arkansas defense Arkansas just 26% from the floor. And Pauls launches it to Hydar. Portis just able to get that one to go. They continue to give Bobby Portis that shot. And if they continue to give it to him, he has to jump up with confidence and stick it. That's the second one he's made in the game. And Stockton lost the handle out of bounds on the sideline. By Kiko Hydar, the hot hands. What is non-negotiable with you as a player? Well, if you ask Kiko Hyder that, he's going to say, my attitude, my effort. I asked the same question to Aaron Kraft last year. That's what he said. Those kind of guys, they find their way onto the floor. They find their way to make good things happen. What is non-negotiable with you the player, as a player? If you can't answer it, you have a problem. And Portis hits another. Well, the freshman with six. He had a dozen in their win over Minnesota. 
And only the sixth paint point out of Arkansas in this game. They're not going to get a lot of them, but they have to make some of them. Gets it off to Stockton. Barham from the corner. And it's rebounded by Wade. Arkansas team that lives on runs, John. They get almost sense a little run coming right now. And Claus flips it in. Trying to close out this half without letting Arkansas get on a four or six point run. Can they do it? About seven seconds, different shot clock to game clock. Pangos let it run down. He was great yesterday in this situation. He will not feel the pressure of the shot clock. He has complete control of the situation right now. Nico comes out for a screen. Shot clock winding down. Got to hoist it up. And they're saying no shot. And they go with an offensive foul. He pushed off. Can't defend it any better than what Arkansas just did. Kiko Hydar met the waist level of Kevin Pangos. Pangos tries to drop his waist a little lower than you. And Kiko Hydar would have no part of it. So 7.6 to go. And a good opportunity for Arkansas to pick up a point or two. Get it up in time to give yourself an offensive rebound chance if you're Arkansas. Losing the handle now. Stockton will fire it down. And 38-31. As we go to break, Kevin Pangos with 15 of those 38 Gonzaga points. Time now for the Land Rover Halftime Report. And from beautiful Maui, we send it back to Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Thank you, John. Land Rover Halftime Report. John said Seth Greenberg is here along with Jay Williams. We'll talk Minnesota Chaminade. Richard Patino without the suit, got the golf shirt on. They're in Hawaii. <laughs> All right, I know, I know. You just expect to see the suit. Here comes Minnesota, down though a deuce. DeAndre Matthew drives, kicks it to Andre Austin. Hollins there, buries the three. Then Lee Bailey's going to lose the ball. DeAndre Matthew again takes it coast to coast. Minnesota would end up winning, but it was close early, but they were still away in the second half. Force Chaminade into 20 turnovers. You're probably going to win the game when you can do that. They were down three quarters of the game. Obviously, they started to make some shots so they could get into pressure, but Chaminade almost had one of those magical moments. Right. What do you make of this Minnesota team early on? It's always interesting to see the new coaches coming, especially a coach as high profile as Richard Pitino. Well, I think he's trying to impose his culture on this basketball program. You know, Tubby Smith came in. He is a Hall of Fame coach, but he got away from that full court pressure, transition type basketball. Now they're back into that transition, pressing and attacking. They're building a brand. All right. Their lack of size, too. Elliot Eliasson is probably their only true big that can help rebound the ball. Let's talk about this Kentucky game then uh, right now. We were, I told you we'd get to it here at the half, and uh, let's get into it. Eastern Michigan taking on Kentucky. There's Jack Gibbons. Joby Hall on hand as well. First half, Kentucky turning the ball over. Coach, this is a problem for them. 11 turnovers in the first half leading to a number of runouts. You can't defend what you can't stop, and that's usually a breakaway layup. Tie game at 10 early on. Andrew Harrison here, the hoop, and one. Again, one of those freshmen we keep an eye on. Eight. 18 fouls called on Eastern Michigan in the first half. Julius Randle only played seven minutes due to foul trouble as well. Conspiracy? No, it's just the way they're calling the fouls. It's horrible. Another turnover leads to a Glenn Bryant dunk. Eastern Michigan down just three, but here comes Kentucky in the second half. Willie Cauley-Stein off the lob, Kentucky a five. Then Julius Randle with the feed from Cauley-Stein down low and one. Kentucky pulling away here a little bit. It's a 49-48 score, the Eastern Michigan hanging around. Coach, you talk about a team, you know, uh, they're not playing in one of these big tournaments. They're at home just before Thanksgiving. How tough is it to get your team motivated at that point? It's really difficult, especially if you think about this Kentucky team and five freshmen, eight freshmen. Think about this, Tuesday, Thanksgiving week, half of the campus is gone. Yep. It's just your basketball team. All you're doing is practicing and preparing for this basketball game. Your family, for this is the first time probably, in your, your life that you're not going to have Thanksgiving with your family. And if they are there, they're coming in to celebrate Thanksgiving gotcha. with you. So to keep them locked in and focused, to have quality practices, 
extremely difficult. Did anybody see the Cleveland State game? I mean, what more motivation do you need than that? That happened the other night. The Cleveland State almost walked into your gym and beat you. There's and a human here's factor. A, there is a human factor. I get it. But all these kids are competitive kids, and they're still learning how to play. I'm going to make this one comment as it pertains to Kentucky. They have a big month of December coming up. They play against Providence. They play against Baylor, UNC, and Louisville. Yeah. But I am not paying attention and not making an assessment on Kentucky basketball until mid to late January. Well, Let me write this down. I'm going to tell you, you know, mid to late January, mid January. because right. that, this team is young. They don't have chemistry. They don't have, they're not playing cohesively yet. Right. We'll find out everything we need to know about them towards the end of the, after the new year. All right, Coach, that? while you write that down, write that down. I've got to look forward to tonight's that. championship game out there in Maui. Baylor and Syracuse going to match up later on tonight. We'll talk about that coming up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. This halftime report is presented by Land Rover. Above and beyond. Now a championship game tonight on ESPN. Baylor and Syracuse. Baylor last night. Coach, what did you see from that? This is a long, aggressive, athletic basketball team. But here are a couple things about Baylor. One, if you're going to defeat Baylor, you better find Brady Heslop and Gary Franklin in transition. Two, you must rebound the basketball. They're plus 10 on the glass. And finally, when you drive it in there, you better redistribute the basketball because they're averaging seven shot blocks a game. They got a good win over a good uh, Dayton team last night. Jay, what do you think about Syracuse earlier? Really? Tyler Ennis really grew up last night, had 28 points, four assists. He controlled the pace of the ball game, made smart decisions. Jeremy Grant, Coach Greenberg's favorite player, came off the bench for 18, 19 points. Trevor Cooney found that rhythm offensively. And, and this is what Syracuse does. Even though sometimes they may struggle to shoot the ball, they beat you up on the boards. Between C.J. Fair, talk about Jeremy Grant, Dewan Coleman, Rakeem Christmas, they're really big down low. Looking forward to seeing that one tonight. Also tonight, though, we've got plenty of other basketball to get to even before we get to that. The uh, semifinals of the NIC, NIT season tip-off. Number four, Arizona takes on Drexel. That's coming up real soon, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. Then it's number six, Duke and Alabama on the deuce. Wildcats are 20 and 2 all time in the NIT season tip off, including a 7 and 1 mark at MSG. Duke has won 13 straight games in this tournament's last loss to Indiana back in 1996. Of course, both are available on that watch. Yes, the app. We're talking a little about a couple of freshmen we're going to see in this one. We're talking freshmen again. We are because there's so many of them out there. And, and here's one. You know, we've seen a lot of Kentucky and Duke, but but what about Aaron Gordon? I don't, maybe I think a whole lot of people haven't seen that much of him, but they certainly will as the year progresses. Aaron Gordon is a six foot nine inch running jumping hybrid forward. He can get to the offensive glass. I call him Baby Blake Griffin with his ability to change ends of the floor. He's developing a step out jump shot. He's more of a catch-and-shoot guy right now. Eventually, he'll be able to shot fake and put it on the floor, but he is a hard matchup. He's like a pogo stick. He reminds me of Sean Marion a little bit with his ability. He goes up for rebound and can really explode up very quickly for another rebound. And when I think about Jabari Parker, I think he's like a blend between a Camelo Anthony and a Paul Pierce with his ability to push the ball, but he's more of a willing passer. He can get people involved, but also they love to utilize him on the block. He can turn, he can face, he can knock down a jump shot, and he's he's probably the most versatile player mm -hmm. in the country. Don't you think they're using him a lot? They are. Like, they, they have to. They have LeBron, LeBron, post presence. Like they used LeBron James in the Olympics. I, I think it's really interesting how Mike is utilizing his versatility. I have plenty more to get to here in the Land Rover Halftime Report as we go to break. Michael Qualls with a jumper for Arkansas. Trailing by seven, though, to Gonzaga at the break. This halftime report is presented by Land Rover. Above and beyond. Welcome back to the Land Rover Halftime Report. To the women's game. Actually, let's talk about what to watch for. This is the men's game. As you know, Heaton Cavaliers tonight on ESPN. They'll tip it up at 730 it's LeBron's return to Cleveland. He's returned before, but as you know, every time he goes back, it's a big deal. And it'll be a big deal tonight on ESPN. Speaking of a big deal, this is the women's game right here. Tara Vanderveer trying to join the 900-win club. Her team's playing in Mexico right now against Florida Gulf Coast. They have a 15-point lead, so she's well on her way. Um, this is a pretty good club to be a part of. Kevin Pangos, pretty good first half for him. 15 points as Gonzaga has the lead. Second half on ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. Watching ESPN 
Women's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Hey, back here in Maui from beautiful Lahaina, Gonzaga at the break, leading this one by seven. The A Sports Maui Invitational, 30th year of this tournament. Hi, folks, John Chompy alongside Jimmy Dykes. So at the start of our telecast, we talked about the ability to guard or not guard Kevin Pangos and how difficult it is, and uh, his skills have been on display. He has been outstanding. Both teams, however, have, bought, have brought two fists to the fight. They are going at each other. Arkansas has guarded hard against Kevin Pangos, but he is hard to guard. He is an absolute supreme shooter because he knows he deserves to make shots because of the hours and hours and hours he's been in the gym. He snaps it off up top as well as you'll see in the college game. He is a playmaker off the bounce, off of hard cuts. Look right here. His vision, what am I looking for? Where's the secondary defender? The, de the secondary defender tells me this is going to be a drop-off pass in complete control of the game. If your best player does not have some dog in him, you're going to get beat by good teams. Kevin Pangos is skilled. He's also got a little bit of dog in him. You look at the numbers. He's averaged 22 and a half through the first two games, 15 more today. So the number is pretty much in line today, if not better than what we've seen so far from Kevin Pangos. One other thing to keep in mind, the Zags with a 20 to 4 advantage in terms of points in the paint. So they have gotten a lot of looks in close. Portis on the baseline. And he continues to hit that. As well he should. That's not what he's best at right now. But Gonzaga says, we're going to give you that shot. And Bobby Portis is making them pay for that decision. Pango's the only guy in the first half to play all 20 minutes. He's a highly skilled, well-conditioned athlete. By Landis Harris. And Harris, the 6-6 transfer from the University of Houston, a native of Little Rock, Arkansas. Mike Anderson's guys are trying to do all they can to make Gonzaga uncomfortable. Arkansas is a bunch of hard-charging, blue-collar, tough guys. And Gonzaga better understand that the remaining 19-20 this game. Arkansas will not go away without a fight in this building. Bell's got five. The lead for the Zags is seven. The Zags has used that zone. It's been pretty effective at times. Portis high arcing shot. Good effort there by Gower. And they definitely look to exploit the side's advantage. You got Karnowski and Portis battling down low. And Karnowski bulk-wise with a size advantage. He gets the ball and backs down. Flips it up, and he's fouled. So the seven-footer from Poland drawing the contact, he'll shoot two. John, if the double team's going to come on Karnowski, it has to come quicker. Because once he gets his 300-and-something pounds into the lane, it's advantage Karnowski. And the double team doesn't come until he gets into the lane, and that's too late. Right there, you see the double down by Fred Gulley. I don't care if you monster with another big or a guard digs down. It has to be sooner than that. Karnowski mentioned how he was recruited. And they got their hands on him. And if you're checking him out at the World Championships, fires up an air ball there. Tommy Lloyd there sitting in the white shirt next to Jerry Krause, who's in the red shirt. But Tommy's responsible for... for Recruiting a ton of their international guys the likes of Elias Harris from Germany Pangos from Canada This team has always had an international fl flavor to it And there's a reason that Gonzaga brand stretches globally in terms of basketball Harris foul And this Harris is so good in the ISO situations in that half-court offense He'll foot fake you, he'll lift you a little bit. He's a hard guy to handle. An awkward size with an awkward game. Radowski sits with the three fouls. Stockton flies in for the board. Porter shot that one a little quick and a little flat. 
Gower inside, and they get up for a travel. Eighth turnover on the Bulldogs. And that time, the double down on the post touch was a little quicker by Arkansas. And it kind of caught Dower by surprise. Arkansas has been interesting to watch offensively. The three games here, it's been a different guy stepping up. The first game, it was Qualls delivering with 21 points off the bench. He flips that one in. He's got 10. It's Minnesota, Landis Harris led him with 15. Dower goes to work quickly, plus the foul. Sam Dower, the senior from Minnesota. He's a skilled guy. And Bobby Portis is a freshman, plays too tall. Look at Bobby Portis, stands straight up as a post defender. Oh, Bobby Portis was too tall. Dower felt it and spun right off of it. Free throw makes it a nine-point game. Qualls tries a three. Didn't need that shot. Qualls can make good open threes, but they did not need that shot. Stockton throws it away to Jimmy Dykes. Could have been a Washington general, Jimmy Dykes. But oh, him to you had to go there again, didn't you? Sit here courtside. Huh? I cannot believe that you turned that down. That's my only offer to play basketball after Arkansas was for the Washington Generals who play against the Harlem Globetrotters, and I I turned it down to get into coaching. Ba bad move on my part for a year. I understand that now. I mean, that's something you could tell the kids. I could have traveled the world getting beat 162 to 84 every night, but so what? I could, I could, I might be in the Harlem Globetrotter Hall of Fame right now had I taken that off. That is correct. You would have truly found out what hard to guard means. <laughs> yes, I would have. <laughs> Portis being harassed in double team. Flipped it up, it was short. Offensive rebound. Plus the foul, Bobby Portis. Good second effort there by the freshman. You told me again, I will not be punked as a college basketball player like I was Monday night, never again in my career. He does a good job of stepping through the monster, the double down, and then picks up the loose ball quickly. Gets it up on the glass. He is battling as well as he's battled so far in a Razorback uniform in this game. This is a hard question as it relates to Portis. We've seen him making jump shots on the baseline from 8, 10 feet. When he grows into his game, where will most of his points come from? I, I think around the rim with, with the ability to step out and knock down 15, 16 footers. He's not a crazy great athlete. He's a good athlete that has an unbelievable motor for a kid his size. Portis tries a three. And Pango steps in for the board. Trying to do a little more than he's capable of is Bobby Portis. Little Euro step move from Kevin Pangos, and Bell absorbs the contact. He's charged with the foul. And a second foul on Antoine Bell. 80% of Kevin Pangos' offense this year has come out of the half court. 20% of it, though, comes out of his plays in transition. And Mike Muldowney is okay. I think the camera's still working. Mike all right though, yeah. 19 plays coming to this game for Kevin Pangos in transition. Off of those 19 plays, he has 30 points. Highly productive in the transition run game is Kevin Pangos. So steady, 16 points today for Pangos. Buries them both, Gonzaga with an eight point advantage. Harris using the dribble to get around Dower. And now some of that pressure from Arkansas. Bell right at the rim. There was a great pass under pressure to lead Gary Bell towards the basketball and keep him in free-flowing movement to attack the rim. Had that ball been thrown at him, he would have had to pause a little bit and it would have affected his shot. 
at the other rim. Harris missed everything. Portis plus the foul. And Bobby Portis will shoot. Bobby Portis is competing for a true freshman on the big stage against Gonzaga. He is throwing some haymakers himself. I was throwing some haymakers on this slide over the last three days, I can tell you that. I think he'd get up to about 30 miles an hour, at least how that's how it felt for Kennedy and I. The official count, 56 times down that slide in Maui. Back here in Maui, their number 11 Gonzaga leading Arkansas by six, part of Peace Week presented by Lowe's here at the Lahana Civic Center. And give me a little behind the scenes look. This is how close we are to the water. So you watch the game, and we'll go outside. Yep, I mean, just literally right down the driveway, there's the water. We'll go in and take a dip sometimes at halftime. And then the locker rooms in the four corners of the building, and they're kind of tight. The old school lockers, I love it. And then pictures everywhere in terms of history and some of the great players that have come through here, the likes of Steve Nash and so many others. So to that great performance by Adam Morrison, 43 points. That's the all-time record. And a gym that seats 2,400. And the EA Sports Maui Invitational in its 30th year. It is awesome is the best way to describe it. From the weather outside to the, the essence and the feel and the aroma in this gym the atmosphere and the energy in here all three days has been tremendous you know this morning that 9 30 game it was buzzing already what, what i love about this tournament the, all the junk that's involved with college basketball these days it doesn't make its way to this aisle it's old school locker rooms it's 20 minutes to warm up and as soon as your game's over you have about three minutes to get out of your locker room because the other team's already in there and they're coming back in for their warm-up period is all the nonsense that surrounds our game. It just doesn't seem to make its way to Maui, and I love that about it. Dower shot contested by Portis, and he gets it in. Arkansas cannot get on that 6-8-0 run where they thrive. And Mark Few knows it. He has four timeouts left, and don't think he won't go to one quickly if he feels that Arkansas surge coming. And Guinness comes up with a loose ball, and now it's Pangos wide open. And Kyle Drake Guinness drains it. And then they get so many guys who can shoot it. Gower can step out and shoot it. They're making 10 threes a game. Gonzaga at 46%. Nice move by the big guy, Lance Harris. Just like that last play. The Gardensaw did a great job of putting Pangos and taking his space away. They made him feel the bodies, but it didn't bother him. He just took the ball to the right third and threw it back to a trailer. Nothing but the bottom. Drankinis blocked by Portis. Dower gathers it in. Drankinis a rebound and a new clock. And Bell feeding the post and Dower. Gary Bell Jr. couldn't hit. Hogs looking to chip away at an eight-point deficit. Harris over Dran Guinness. And it ends up with the Zags. Wide open Pangos. He is feeling it today. He's got 20. Timeout Arkansas. One of the best guards in the country. I said before this tournament started, if I had to choose one guy out of all the teams in Maui to start my team with, it would be Kevin Pangos for all that he does on and off the floor. A humble star with some competitive fire and dog in him. Hard to handle. Back here in Maui, John Chambi, Jimmy Dykes, Gonzaga by 11. Mark Few loves his point guard, Kevin Pangos. He's just the, the consummate guard, the consummate teammate, uh, you know, the consummate friend. You know, he's got a great uh, cheery disposition, I guess. And, uh, you know, you can't help but respect and... Uh, I think if you're playing with him, look up to his work ethic. I mean, the guy's in the gym every day, 
outside of practice working on his craft. And his craft is a three-point shooter, a playmaker, understands the game, a game manager, a competitive, fired kid. Watch his shot right here. Now, as this thing goes up, hold it, guys. There's some things about it. He has a very specific target that he looks at just above the front of the rim. The shot elbow is going to finish up just about eye level. He has very little head movement, none. Therefore, his eyes aren't moving, the target's not moving. And every shot looks the same from this kid. You watch him shoot a 12-foot jump shot in pregame warm-ups, it looks exactly the same as a 22-foot jump shot. Those are the common threads of all great shooters, and Pangos is a great shooter. Gerard Coleman in the game for Gonzaga. He played only three minutes in the first half. Yesterday against Chaminade, he was bothered by cramps. Lefty goes at it, blocked there by Moses Kingsley. Madden at the rim and banks it home. Arkansas is trying to get hot defensively. We talk about teams getting hot on the offensive end. Arkansas is trying to get hot on the defensive end to generate some offense. It can be done. If there's a team that can do it, Arkansas is it. Interesting here, Cody Clark matching up on Pangos, who rejects the screen from Karnowski. Seven on the shot clock. Pangos way downtown. Good defense by Arkansas in that position. I don't know if they're hot yet defensively, but they're certainly warm. Need a bucket right here. A basket will make their defense go to another hot level. Can they get it done? Madden looking at Clark inside. And a foul on Cole. The journey to the tourney, and it's presented by Sonic. Our NIT sees a tip off tonight, 7 Eastern ESPNU. Number four, Arizona in action. And then ESPN 2, 930 Eastern, number six. Duke will take on Alabama. And more college basketball tomorrow on Thanksgiving. The Field Spice Classic coming your way. And number five, Oklahoma State in action in that one. Madden lost the handle. Williams there, couldn't put it home. Kingsley inside, flips it up and in. The freshman from Mississippi played AAU ball with Bobby Portis. That's why Arkansas is built to win games on the road this year. Unlike the past two under Mike Anderson, they could not make that type of tough man's play around the rim the past two seasons. Now they can. Trying to stay hot defensively is Arkansas. Kardowski into the paint. Pass back out, deflected. They're officially hot on the defensive end. Williams lost the handle, and now Bell is harassed, and he's fouled. Our under 12 timeout here at the Lahana Civic Center. And Gonzaga leads. Still to come, our EA Sports Maui Invitational Championship. And it'll be Syracuse, the orange high flying attack. And they will take on the Baylor Bears, who escaped last night with a win over Dayton. Baylor Syracuse and it's coming up tonight from Maui at 10 Eastern on ESPN Sean McDonough, Jay Billis and a call still to come Cal and Dayton but our championship is set from Lahaina the Orange and the Bears Baylor never panicked in that ball game against Dayton they trailed for most 39 minutes of the game to be honest with you and they never allowed an eight-point Dayton lead to swell to a 15 or 16 point lead they took good shots they continued to battle on the boards and Baylor and Syracuse will square off. And Zach able to break the pressure. And Pangos backing it out. So again, a championship coming up tonight at 10 Eastern. We get a foul inside. And that is going to be on Hydar, his second. Well, he's trying to keep Gary Bell from running off of the screen. Gary Bell is their percentage-wise their best three-point shooter, but he is at his absolute best when he's running off the of screens. And Bell's got a height and a strength advantage on Hydar as he works off the screen. 
Good switch out by DeCorey Williams, but then that creates a mismatch on the inside. Again, what is your counter when you take something away? As a player and as a team, Gonzaga understands it. Williams hoist Karnowski able to pull down the ball. Eight rebounds for Shemek Karnowski. And goes short on that shot. Arkansas trying to find a, a groove offensively. And Cody Clark rattles that one home. The senior from Birmingham, one of their co-captains along with Idar. Gonzaga 50% in this game, actually below their season average, which is 57%. Angles with the bigger Ja'Cory Williams on him, steps back, buries another. Williams dropped his hands just for a split second, and Pangos read it. It's another thing you don't talk too much about, how quickly he can get that ball in and out of his shot hand. 23 for the junior from Canada. Clark from the free throw line. This team has been in this range for a good chunk of it, about six, eight points. Gonzaga on top. And it's going to stay in the range unless Arkansas can get. You know, a minute and a half to two minutes of really hot defensively and get on a run. They're not going to do it if they don't cover this kid, though. Absolutely a lights-out shoot. 26 for Pangos. He had 27 in their opening loss against Dayton. He has a variety of threes, does Kevin Pangos. He has the step backs. He can dribble into his shot. He can do it out of transition, out of spot-ups, off screens. There's no scenario around the three-point line that Kevin Pangos has not worked on and he cannot do. Little floater off the glass wouldn't go. Mad towards Bell and a tie-up. They go possession arrow. It belongs to the Zags. Back-to-back -back threes by Kevin Pangos. The use of the ball screen. And as soon as right there, Williams drops his hands. Pangos reads it, and it's up and in. In the very next possession, Arkansas gets screened. Kai Madden tries to go to the top of the screen. Dower's too big for that action to occur. You leave Kevin Pangos space, you are going to get a knot on your head every time. I mean, what specifically can you do to try and stop him? You have to have multiple guys that are wired to accept the challenge. He's going to knock shots down on you, but you have to make him work extremely hard. He's got Haidar, a smaller defender, on him right now. You switch out, you throw different looks at him, you try to force him weak in that ball screen action. Dower with the ball fake and a soft touch. Jump, that's the counter one more time. They force Kevin Pangos weak in the ball screen action, forcing him into his weak hand. He plays with a nice pace and just simply throws it back to Dower. That's counter what you're trying to take away. Kingsley the bucket, Mike Anderson calls timeout. 7.49 to go in this one. Kevin Pangos putting on another excellent performance. Gonzaga as a team, Jimmy, they move the ball so well. Well, here's the deal. Good shooting ball clubs are also excellent shooting or passing ball clubs. Bad shooting teams, they shoot bad passes. You don't shoot a bad pass. Well, Gonzaga didn't throw bad passes. Their, their passes are on time and on target. They're always in rhythm, and all five guys can do it. You saw, you saw Karnowski off the post with a whip around to his shooter. Certainly the guards can do it. It's a highly, highly skilled team. Not crazy athletic, but highly skilled. Kevin Pangos, their leading scorer today with 26. He had 27 in the opener. They came back and blasted Chaminade yesterday. He had 18 in that one. And he continues to deliver. Only a junior, Kevin Pangos, came on campus and he has started every game but one. His first college start, he had 33 points against Washington State. I'm sure there will be a few tweets on my Twitter account about Kevin Pangos when we finish. You know what's killing college basketball? Twitter. 
it is killing college basketball from a coach's standpoint because you go into the locker room, how many followers do you have? 2,000. How many do you have? 4,000. How many do you have? 800. After a game, all those players are reading through all those tweets about what you should have done, the coach isn't doing you this with you. It is making the job very difficult for college coaches, and I've talked to enough of them to know that it is a concern in the locker room right now. Shot clock winding down. Stockton looking for some help, and he gets it from guess who? Yep. yep. A baseline drive is always followed up by a baseline shooter in the opposite corner in this Gonzaga system. Kevin Pangos tweets another three. And a takeaway there for the Zags. Arkansas can't get their head down. They have to keep fighting and scratching and clawing. They're just one run away from getting back in this game. But Another gonna... from Pangos. Jeez. 32 points against a good, aggressive, harassing Arkansas long-arm team. Bell trying to answer. They dower the board. Well, if you're Kevin Pangos, you love being able to use the screens from a guy who's seven feet and 300 pounds. Dower a three. And just like that, it is all Zags. They're up by 18. No one, no team in college basketball can match Gonzaga when you break down all the areas that, that they do. Spot up jumpers, transition, pick and roll offense, pick and roll offense for the screener and the ball handler, the post up, the cuts. Kevin Pangos though as a shooter. What does he look at? I asked him before the ball game. He said, I want to look just above the front of that rim. That's my focus point. That's where I want the ball to go. Why would I look directly at the front of the rim or the back of the rim? I, I always look just over the front of the rim because that's where I want the ball to end up. Kevin Pangos, watch the ball. Bam, right over the front of the rim, no matter where he's at. He has a very specific concentration in terms of laser eyes on the target. The shot elbow, when he finishes, his shot elbow is always at eye or nose level. Watch his shot elbow, where it finishes. Boom, it's always at his nose level. You cannot shoot the ball with better technique than what Kevin Pangos shoots the ball with. Pangos, one off of his career high. 33 in that game against Washington State. I mentioned that was his first college start. John, I was breaking down Gonzaga early this morning on Synergy, comparing them with teams like BYU and Duke and Oklahoma State, Wisconsin, teams that are really on fire offensively, clicking well. It ain't close. Gonzaga was excellent in every category that you can break down offensively. Clark blocked by Karnowski, and then Portis puts it in. Bobby Portis, a dozen yesterday, and the freshman has 16 in this one. Y young man has grown up on the island. He needs to go back with a real big, a little hog chip on his shoulder and not let it come off till the season's over. He will be a difference maker for Arkansas in the SEC this year. Yeah, Bobby Portis, first McDonald's All-American, nine years for the Razorbacks, but they trail it big right now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by EA Sports FIFA 14. EA Sports, it's in the game. Rated E for everyone. Chris, I got another good freshman for you to watch. Tyler Ennis is Syracuse, and he'll lead number eight Syracuse against Baylor, ranked 18th in our championship game. That's tonight, 10 Eastern ESPN. EA Sports Maui Invitational, our championship coming up. Kevin Pangos with 32 points, one off his career high. He's seven of eight from three. Has not come out of the ball game yet. 32 points in 34 minutes. All great shooters I've ever watched on the college level are in terrific condition and shape. They get chased for 40 minutes, game after game. Their legs have to hold up. Bobby Portis, 18 points now for the Frosh. And again, a huge recruit for them. Anderson from watching it since he was a sophomore in high school. Angos has Antoine Bell on him now. Everybody's giving it a try for the Razorbacks. And they haven't had a lot of success. As Gower goes up against Cody Clark. 
Lefty spins, and he's fouled. He'll shoot two. You know, the other night, when Christoph Verdell went off against Baylor, he was making shots, but Baylor wasn't guarding. Arkansas is getting after Kevin Pinkos. Now, they have climbed up into him. They have challenged him. They've switched out. They've switched out different guys on him. And he has just had an answer for everything that Arkansas has tried to do to him. Again, there's a creativity to Pangos, whether it's as a playmaker or a scorer. You're just sort of watching him, and it feels like he kind of slows the game down as it goes on. He's been on quite a show. 27 in game one, now 32 in game three. As Dower has come up with 16 points in this game. Qualls with a three, got it. No, that's a two. I, I really like Michael Qualls' game. And he's got as much pop as anybody around the rim with the basketball, and his shot looks really good. He's a high percentage open jump shooter. Makes his first step lethal. One of the most athletic players in the country, and he's Absolutely. got a really good looking shot. Just a sophomore. This is a, a young Arkansas team in the key spots. Pangos going to work. Dower will put it on the floor. And Dower is fouled. So Sam Dower Jr. will go to the line. And it's Gonzaga by 14, 406 to go. That last foul on Anthon Bell at his third. Mark Hughes Ball Club is averaging over 1.1 three points per play in every situation that you break them down. Spot up jumpers, transition, pick and roll offense, offensive rebound putbacks, isolations, end offs. There's nothing that you can look for in an offense that Gonzaga is not in control of and producing at a high rate. Now, year in and year out, they're as good as any offense out there. Last year, rated the most efficient offensive team. They were third in field goal percentage in the nation. This team is really stilled, and maybe the one position that they lack right now, Gonzaga, is that athletic 6'7", six, 6'8", six, forward spot, and Angel Nunez, a transfer from Louisville, will be eligible at semester if he produces at a pretty good rate at that spot. Gonzaga can make some uh, serious noise in March. Archie Miller and the Dayton Flyers making their way into the building, and they will take on Cal. What better way to step off of a bus than with your little girl at your side in Maui? The team's played hard, competed. Archie Miller is a star in the locker room in terms of how he handles his guys. He's on top and out in front of every situation. Not too important. The game's not so important he can't walk in the gym with his daughter. I love that. Gully finding claws. Oh, he gets Wedged between the backboard and the rim on the block. The ball will stay with Arkansas in the alternating possession. Our old friend Bill Raftery, what would he call it? The neck ball. The neck ball. <laughs> uh, here in Maui, enjoying ourselves, watching Gonzaga lead Arkansas, 78-63. Well, Saturday night, the Sheridan Maui Resort and Spa played host to the annual EA Sports Players Video Game Party. Each school represented as players faced off in Madden NFL 25. And it was Arkansas's Cody Clark that took home the trophy. He beat Dayton's Devin Oliver in the final. So Cody Clark, congratulations. EA Sports, great host. Our EA Sports Maui Invitational, our 30th year. Do a phenomenal job, does EA Sports and folks behind the scenes with the Maui Invitational year after year. As they treat the all the visiting teams like royalty when they come here. It is an incredible experience. The student athletes, can't imagine any of them feel like they're an exploited student athlete right now. Like it seems to be a hot topic in college sports. If this is exploitation of the student athlete, I'll come every year, wouldn't you? I mean, Karnowski with the board. Nine for the big fella. 
and a 14-point Gonzaga advantage. Arkansas has done a lot of good things in this game. They're plus one on the rebound margin against two giants inside, and Karnowski and Dower have only turned it over nine times against a Gonzaga defense has been very aggressive himself. The difference in the ball game has been the guy at the top of the screen, number four, Kevin Pangos. Bell with a catch and shoot. Doug, John, what do you do? You have you have two lights out shooters, one on one side of the floor and one on the other. Stockton in the middle of the floor with two absolute hosses to throw it to on the low block. We said it earlier, for as much as we focused on Pangos, and he is brilliant by percentage in their careers. They're both juniors. Bell is a higher percentage three-point shooter. Just around 43% in his career. They get a foul inside on Karnowski. I don't, with my first initial eye, it didn't look like that he came down. But those arms are out in front of him. He has to learn to get those arms straight up. He's a mountain of a man. He's not going to block shots by jumping off the ground. He's going to discourage shots by throwing up a strong wall. But if he breaks the plane of verticality, it's going to be called every single time. Mark Few is not crazy about the call right now, but when he looks at the tape, he will pull in Karnowski and say, look, this is why you're getting called. You can't get your arms out in front of you. You teach it. Get your elbows even with your ears and leave them there. Just leave them there. You're 7'1 and 300 pounds. But that young man has played really hard today. He did a lot of good things in this game. Seven points, nine rebounds for Karnowski. 59 to go and Gonzaga in control by 17. Ten points for Harris. Gonzaga, the three-point ball has been a huge part of the success today. Six for their last six, and overall 12 out of 20 from beyond the arc. Pangos picks up his dribble and gives it off to Bell. Look at the moves by Bell oh. getting to the hoop. Ring the bell, Gary Bell. A dozen for the junior from the state of Washington. Harris a three. Zag up by 18. So the Zags looking to get out of here at two and one. What do you think Mark Few has found out about his team in this tournament? I, I think he found out there may be a tougher ball club than he thought they were when they left the building against Dayton on Monday night because they have bounced back against a really tough, strong Arkansas team. Watch Gary Billy talk about the skill level that this club has. Guys with multiple handles can beat you in a variety of ways, variety of three-point shots. They are so skilled at driving at you and then finishing with the proper hand to stay away from the shot blocker. We saw Stockton do it in the first half. We've seen Pangos do it. Now Bell does it. It is something that they thrive and work on daily. And what, a, what about Arkansas? What do you think that, that Mike Anderson's found out about his team? Is there on their way to going one and two. They're better than they were last year. This is a ball club that Mike Anderson really likes. He likes their toughness. He likes their ability to play strong basketball around the rim. That six-foot radius around the rim determines if you're an NCAA team or not, and they are this year, in my opinion. I think they're going to be very, very close because Arkansas is so hard to beat in Bud Walton Arena. It would be very difficult for any team to go in there and win this year, and now Arkansas is built to win meaningful ball games on the road. And that year three under Mike Anderson, whether at UAB or Missouri, has been the year that he has taken the teams to the NCAA tournament. I'll be more surprised if Arkansas is not in the NCAA this year than if, or if they are, not if they are. 2008, the last time that Arkansas has been an attorney, that was when they were under John Pelfrey. This is Rashad Madden checks back in. So you're saying you'd be more surprised if they didn't get in? I will from what I've seen in this tournament. Okay. Yep. 
And they have size. They can really get after you defensively, and they have depth to play the style. They should never play a tired brand of basketball. And I think they have managed to figure out that they, they can play games and win games without a true point guard. Some of the questions they had early this year, they have answered for me in the island. Landis Harris will go to the line. Fans get close to all the action wherever you are. The new Sports Center app, blazing fast scores, the hottest news and highlights, analysis, and access to your favorite Sports Center talent. 24-7 via Twitter. You can download the new Sports Center app by calling Star Star SC from your phone. Well, sometimes the other guy's good is better than your good, and sometimes the other team's good is better than your team's good. And that's what it boiled down to today. And Zaga got knocked in the nose by Dayton, but you're looking at a legitimately top 20 team right now in Gonzaga. Bell stepping through, and they get a timeout. Gonzaga called timeout. So 131 to go. And the Zags will regroup. All right, so coming up tonight at 10 Eastern, it will be Syracuse going up against Baylor. John Chambi, Jimmy Dykes here. It'll be Sean McDonough and Jay Billis on the call. What's your take as far as that matchup is concerned? Well, a terrific matchup. Uh, Tyler Ennis has been great in this tournament. You're coming in, you don't know as a true freshman point guard, how is he going to handle playing on the road? And although this is a neutral floor, you're always concerned. Tyler Ennis has been beautiful so far in Maui. A score when he needs a score, not turning the ball over when that's his function. And I, I, I think they're a little tougher than Baylor. Now, Baylor showed some toughness last night. But Syracuse is a ball club that they can really get after you. They're used to winning. Jeremy Grant and C.J. Fair might be the best pair of forwards that a team has in college ball this year. A very meaningful ball game. Baylor, the NIT champions last year. Too much talent this year for Baylor not to be an NCAA team. If they win the game tonight, that's a huge stepping point towards an NCAA berth. All right, still to come, by the way, you got Cal and Dayton. That is our next game here at the Lahaina Civic Center. Timeout, Pangos handles, Miko setting a screen. And Pangos, high arcing shot, that wouldn't go. Coleman the board. And they get a foul on Falls. This kid's a key point, key piece for Mark Few going forward because he's different than Pangos and Bell. Nearly anyone else are really any zag in the last several years because he is a slashing playmaker play with his hair on fire guy and it might drive mark you crazy at times but he needs him on the floor listen to this round of applause for kevin pangos well deserved one of the better individual performances in the history of the Mali invitation 32 points one off his career high kevin pangos added four assists he had seven three-pointers missed just the one now you mentioned Coleman Mark Few says that the Providence transfer might be the most athletic player he has ever had we look at a shooter like Pangos and, and all players know this when you talk to them they might not give you the right answer if you ask them do you deserve to make shots in a game they're all gonna say yes but deep down in their heart only a select you really feel that they deserve to make shots in a game now how do you get that feeling from hours and hours and hours in the gym by yourself putting yourself in game situations going game speed and, and that's what mark few talked about in the sound bite in the second half no one outworks this guy he he thinks he deserves to make every shot he uses that weighted ball how common is that not not common enough now Gonzaga uses it a lot as a team, and that's another reason why they're a great passing ball club. They throw balls with zip on them from distance because they have really good, you know, strength in their hands, strength in their arms. They're used to throwing that thing around. Arkansas uses the heavy ball a lot. It's a big part of Kevin Pangos and his practice regimen. Bell steps in out of bounds and with 
46.9 to go in this one. The Zags inbounding up by 15. He lives in the gym. And Arkansas's guys will have a new practice facility, a $23 million facility that's going to break ground on December the 7th. And those kids will be able to work themselves to death any time of day they want about a year from now. That's a huge thing for Arkansas basketball going forward that their athletic director, Jeff Long, just refused to give up on and stayed after it like a bulldog. And I believe their groundbreaking ceremony is maybe next weekend. But look at this. Mark Few bringing his starting backcourt back in. Had enough of that. So Pangos and Bell come back into the game. With 41.1 to go. Arkansas down by a dozen. Make it 11. And now Bell fouls Pangos, who gives him a look. And he'll march down the other end. That foul on Bell, his fifth. I'm telling you, if your best player is fourth, I beg your pardon. Sean, if your best player isn't a fighter, I'm not talking about he'll walk away from a fight. I'm talking about he'll start the fight if he has to. If your best player isn't wired like that, you're not going to beat the best teams. And Kevin Pangos is wired like that. Now we showed you Dayton coming into the gym, and now the Cal Bears coming on in. I think Cal's going to be pretty good, by the way. I agree. They've been the most consistent team in the Pac-12 the last five years. The only team to finish in the top four every year. Mike Montgomery squad is good. A real blow to the eye injury of Richard Solomon yesterday, but that's a good ball club. Kingsley, stick it to it, puts it in. Timeout, Arkansas. And worth noting, Kevin Pangos, by the way, now with 34 points. That is a new career high for the junior who has had himself quite an afternoon. And dialing at long distance, getting teammates involved. And Kim Bangos, one of the top guards in the country. Well, we, we've seen some hot shooting in this gym. Soft rims, Christoph Veradell got it going with 10 made threes against Baylor. One point shy of the Maui scoring invitation record. Trevor Cooney lined it up and dialed it in from distance five times. Not today, Kevin Pango steps onto the floor. He was chased all over the floor, but he did, was bound and determined to get himself open. He knocks down seven. This is a shooter's gym. If there ever was a shooter's gym that college guys play in, we did a terrific job of kind of showing you what the background looks like here. And it's equal no matter where you are on the floor at both ends of the floor. The background looks the same. And everybody that's ever come through this gym, if you're a shooter, you cannot wait to get a shot at these rims. I feel like Kevin Pangos can't get wait to get a shot at any rim. <laughs> I mean, he has just poured it in. Had 27 in their first game, 18 yesterday. And now a career-high 34 in this one. Arkansas. Oh, they break pressure. The Zags do. Look out. And Coleman throws it down. That's so good by Gonzaga. Arkansas, when they face guard, you have to have the courage to throw long and make them pay for face guard. Bell in and out. Kingsley plus one. He'll go to the line. Moses Kingsley. He and Bobby Portis, the two prize recruits, the freshmen. Well, if you're Mike Anderson, how do you manage the locker room after a loss? It's crucial for coaches to have a great feel for it. And I would expect him to congratulate his guys on how hard they play and then drive home the point that it is not acceptable to lose a ball game to Gonzaga. You want these young guys to never feel like that it's okay to get back on the plane and head home because you played well against the 11th ranked team in the country. Never lose the lesson, and this is a sharp guy that's very competitive. He took over a program that was in bad shape in a lot of areas, and he's built it back up slowly and surely. But right now, you got to make sure that this is a young Arkansas team that doesn't feel good about themselves getting on the plane from the standpoint that they played a good game today 
that the score is going to show that they get beat. That's a very important lesson. Sam Dower with 19. And Gonzaga on top by 13. Bell from way downtown. Clark and one. Mark Hugh is a, I don't know what the other word is for curious, but that's what he's thinking the same. He continues to talk about the principle of verticality. He has a really good tape to teach his guys that it's going to be called every time. Why do you continue to break that plane? And Cody Clark with the three-point play. And that is going to do it. So Gonzaga and Mark Few, they prevail 91-81. Kevin Pangos' outstanding performance here in this one. And still to come, our championship game, 10 Eastern ESPN, number 8 Syracuse, and number 18 Baylor up next. It'll be Cal taking on Dayton here in Maui. All Kevin Pangos, the junior, a career-high 34, including seven three-pointers. Again, our final 91-81. Gonzaga wins it. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire crew, I'm John Chomby saying aloha from Maui. We send it back. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams.